Hello Dragons, my name is David Cottle. I am the owner, the managing director and the founder of my own company, Musicians Preventative Protection. I'm here today seeking an investment of £50,000 for a stake of 25% in my business. I started the company off from scratch to satisfy a need that a lot of musicians struggle with. If you're a musician that's involved in orchestras, pit work, playing for shows, you could be in a West End show. The show, it's relentless schedule, night after night. A weekend, you may have two or three shows with early matinees. And I'll give you an example. On a Saturday, um, you meet up, say, in the Dog and Duck, have a couple of beers, head over the theatre for the first show, get the horn out, tune it up, and um, have a couple of, maybe have a little beer in the in the first half of the show. Then of course the interval arrives, you zip back to the dog and duck, a quick half, um, back to the show again, second half of the show, get the whole hole, get the instruments going, maybe another little beer in the pit, and then the first show is done. So off you toddle then, you've got maybe 90 minutes or two hours perhaps before curtains up on the second show. So it's back over to the dog and duck, um, a couple of pints over there again, then it's back to the show for the, the next performance, and out with the instrument, start playing the show, little beer in the pit. This is when the problem starts to arrive because you're stuck in the middle of the show, you've had a few beers, you're absolutely bursting at this point to go to the lavatory. And this is where the Musicians Preventative Protection Unit, I have, one, I have an example here. Um, this is when the Musicians Preventative Protection Unit, or as we call it, the musician's PPU comes into its own. Now, before going out to the theatre, there's a simple attachment that goes inside the trousers. Unfortunately, I can't show you that because it is currently under review for a patent. There's an attachment then that goes to a, a an electric pump, which is in your pocket. Now, again, I've got a patent on this, so I'm unable to actually show you the the electric pump but I can tell you it is silent it doesn't make a noise it doesn't interfere in any way with radio equipment like with microphones or lighting in the theatre so um, there'll be no interference with the PA system or as you would call it the tannoy there'll be no interference with the tannoy and all it does then I'll just show you, you just connect this little clip at the bottom to the attachment at the bottom of your trousers and then you you can pop the unit, you can stick the unit under your under your seat or behind your seat. Now we make these units, this is a 5 litre unit, which will cover most situations. Uh, we do them in varying degree, uh, varying sizes. Um, we do have the 10 gallon unit, but that's normally just for bass trombone players. Um, we're hoping to sell these worldwide. Uh, we're hoping to get into major retailers. We think particularly gift shops as well would be um, a useful place to go with it. And um, we are hoping that um, we, it, it will be something that musicians can definitely benefit from and um, it's something for the future. I'm ready to take any of your questions now, dragons. A pitch and a product with mainstream appeal. From David, he's looking for a £50,000 investment to help promote his unusual range. In return, he's offering the Dragons 25% of his company. Peter Jones wants to find out exactly what's on the table. Dave, um, you mentioned that you acquired this company. Yeah. What did you pay for it? Uh, yes, Peter, when I acquired the business, um, it cost me about around about £500 uh, to acquire it. Um, and set up costs and that. Um, but over the last five years, I've spent about um, 106,500 pounds on research and developing the project. Uh, obviously the research involved, um, well, we, the only way we could research it was to actually go to the pub and drink a lot. So um, we did that and uh, developed the product. It didn't actually cost a lot to develop the product. Um, but in total, yeah, the, the, the business actually owes me about 107000 And what did it turn over in its last financial year? Yeah, last year the company, um, well, uh, £107,000 is the, um, the total debt the company holds at the moment. 
Um, but we did sell some products. We actually sold four of the products. The, the products uh, sell for uh, twenty nine ninety nine. So our actual sales uh, from last year, uh, that's I, I think it was about um, best part of one hundred and twenty pounds. Optimistic financial projections, confidently delivered. But Nick Jenkins is wondering whether David's product have already had their moment. David, one of my concerns about this is that every once in a while something comes along that has a wave. The, with the investment that comes, uh, which will mostly be spent on uh, developing further research, uh, but we are hoping that next year we could maybe sell a couple of hundred, a couple of hundred units. We have quite a few retailers interested, some major stores, um, particularly garden centres and um, other retailers. Um, Can I ask you which ones and what's that interest? Oh, all, all the big names, all the big names, all the big names. Interest, there's a lot of interest, definitely a lot of interest. Definitely showing a lot of interest. Great, and what does interest. in discussions mean? In discussions, in discussions means that we probably take them for a pint. Go for and have a few pints and discuss. With a magic wand, though, where would you be? If I had a magic wand, I'd probably be in the Caribbean for a couple of months, St Lucia. What scares me a little bit, listening to you, to be totally honest, um, is I think, I'm not sure you really know where you want to be. I think you're a bit like anywhere where this might sell. David's scattergun approach to where to sell his product has sent alarm bells ringing for Sarah Willingham. And it's left Peter Jones concerned that he is an entrepreneur who likes to spread himself thinly. Dave, um, what else do you do? Well, I'm a musician myself. I still um, perform a lot of gigs. Uh, gigs like the ones I mentioned earlier in the orchestras and that, function gigs, jazz gigs, jazz festivals. Um, so that's what I'm doing at the moment, really. Yeah, that's, mostly it's music. Uh, I like watching. Um, I like watching football. Football's good and the cricket. Um, do a lot of walking and um, ride me back. What's going to happen if somebody invests? Well, Peter, uh, if I can secure the fifty thousand pounds investment today, um, the plan is that we want to break into Europe. So that money will be used primarily to get us into Europe. So I, I'd probably take myself and a few uh, members, uh, so some other musicians. Uh, we're planning to go to Munich, actually, when the beer festival's on. Um, we might get a gig in an umpar band, um, see if we could play sort of four hours consecutively, drinking and playing. Um, so, yeah, we've got ideas for spa uh, also for Spain, uh, Paris. We'd like to go to Paris, Italy. I think it would be great. Um, Particularly the south of Spain, though, maybe the the tourist, uh, you know, the the nice the, the nice areas, the nice warm areas. Um, so I envisage that the 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 fifty thousand pound investment would mostly be spent on the the further development costs of of the product for, and further research. But I think you could be the issue to this business not progressing. You've got a business. You've seen this as an opportunity. I think you might have a pending conflict of interest there coming. You could be diverted and your attention diverted and that's what really concerns me. So I'm going to pass on the investment. I'm going to say I'm out. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. David has lost his first dragon as concerns over his level of commitment to his new business cause Peter Jones to walk away. Will Sarah Willingham set aside her earlier anxieties in order to make the entrepreneur an offer. My issue is, I think you'll struggle in big retail, I really do. I don't think this is a product that you would go to large retailers and, and end up taking off the shelves. I see it selling in independent gift shops because that's where people go to browse. And those independent gift shops are very, very difficult. I'm really sorry, it's not, it's not one that, where I think I can make a really big difference to you. So for that reason, I am out. OK, thank you, Sarah. Dave, I'm, I'm going to tell you where I am. 
you're going to feel very dissatisfied with what I'm about to say next because it's not really going to offer you a lot. I have to look at something and think, I, I, you know, oh, and it's just not getting me. So I'm really sorry, Dave. I'm out. Thank you, Deborah. With two more dragons gone, David's prospects appear increasingly bleak. David, you mentioned £107,000 worth of debt. Is that actually in, 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 in the company? Yeah, the £107,000 is, is my money that's in the company. Yeah, that's technically... Yeah, technically, the company owes me the £107,000. Yeah. Now, I mean, I think one thing you have done is you've been very sensible about what you've asked for. It's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to take somebody who's got a gut feeling for it. I'm going to make you an offer. I can offer you support on the website. I can offer you warehouse distributors and give you all the support that will make this brand go to the next level. But I want you to capitalise your 107,000 as capital so the company doesn't owe you any money. I'm going to give you 50,000, but I want 45%. An offer from Tuka Suleiman. But it comes at a price, nearly half of the equity, as well as an undertaking to write off the six-figure sum that David is currently owed by his own company. With a proven track record in online brand building, Nick Jenkins could be David's perfect investor. I'm going to make you an offer uh, of all of the money for 45%. But what I, what I would put into that is add some time and some team uh, to really help develop the brand to take what you've got there and, uh, and to grow it. On the debt side, what I would simply say is that that needs to be repaid out of one third of the profits. Um, so you'd have to make £300,000 and then your, your money gets paid back. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I'll, um, maybe I'll go and have a think by the wall. Maybe is it, if I can go and have a think by the wall. This is how Please right. do. Well, thank you very much, both of you, for the offer. Thank you, Tuka, but I've decided to go with Nick. Um, I think Nick will be the, um, the, with the finances, that'll work out better. Thanks again, Tuka. And uh, Nick, thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Cheers. Cheers. So success for David, whose business now seems guaranteed to run like clockwork. Two dragons were vying for the deal, but Nick Jenkins' last-minute offer of more favourable terms ultimately won the day. Nick, well done. And I, di I didn't realise you were going to make an offer. That's why you let, you let me do the offer first. Yes, 45%. It's a large part of the business to give away, but it's great to have the opportunity to work with Nick and uh, better times ahead. And more importantly, I can go and book the flights for Munich and uh, we can crack on with the, uh, the European leg of our... Uh, uh, market research into the product and look for further development of the product. Bye-bye.